Hey everyone, it's Shannon. I really wanted to get this video up because I know a lot of you guys really wanted to see it. I really appreciate that you appreciate my honesty and my openness. It's important to be able to address the fact that we are not perfect and that we are human and people make mistakes. So with that being said, this video is about um, me getting sent away to rehab. Now this all happened when I was under the age of 18. I just wanted to let you guys know. I had a really bad drug problem when I was younger. It was not good. When I was 14, I was just like in a really dark place in my life. I was so unhappy. I was so depressed and I hated myself and I hated everybody around me. If you guys watch my videos, you know that like I'm totally not like that today. Like my whole life has changed for the better, but I used to not be like as positive and happy like I am now, especially when I was like in junior high and high school. I had so many problems. I had eating disorders. So they thought I was bipolar, which I'm definitely not bipolar, but I was diagnosed bipolar by a lot of doctors because my evil stepmom was crazy and she didn't like me and so she like tried to sabotage my whole life. I was put on all these medications for like bipolar disorder and like all these like things I didn't have, right? So I was taking all these drugs that were making me gain weight and I kind of just, it was just a spiraling out of control and my parents like were really busy. They both had like jobs where they worked a lot and I was kind of like latchkey kid. I didn't really have anybody to talk to. I was just in a really bad place and so I started getting into drugs. At that point in my life, I really didn't care if I died and so I did drugs because it was my way of escaping like my reality because I was so depressed. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse and it got so bad to the point where I was stealing my mom's car. I was 14, I didn't even know how to drive a car. I would get in fights at school. I got kicked out of every school I was in for drugs or fights or doing something stupid that I shouldn't have been doing. Eventually my parents found out that I was doing drugs because I wasn't trying to hide it, you know, I just didn't care. I literally cared about nothing. When I remember I had like run away and went and did drugs with people that were older than me, like, you know, really scary things that like I think about now and I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm still alive. <laughs> but I had like overdose and I had, you know, overdose a few times actually. You know, they had to like restart or like pop my heart and like what is it called when they put that shit down your throat um, when you overdose, like charcoal or whatever? I don't remember because I was like so fucked up at the time. Really shitty time of my life. I almost died a few times. You think that that would stop me, but it didn't. It like, <sighs> sorry. It's like so hard to talk about. Cause like I can't even imagine. Like I can't imagine if like I really did kill myself that I like wouldn't have the life I have now because I love my life so much. Like I have such an amazing life. And it like, it like hurts my heart so bad to like even like think about how bad I used to be. Sorry, make a long story short, this is what happened. I was given all these medications for my depression. I had like gone on some like drug binge or something and I had come back home and I would like sleep for days and one of these nights or whatever, my mom came in and she gave me this pill and I was like so out of it because I had been up for days like on drugs. She like gave me this pill and she's like, here you forgot to take your medicine and so like, you know, I just took it or whatever. I thought it was my medicine. Well, like a few hours, they like, wake me up and I'm like so drugged like I was like really drugged and I didn't know that my mom had drugged me and she like woke me up and I couldn't move like I literally was like they gave me like some horse tranquilizer or something and they started like putting clothes on me and my mom was like crying <laughs> sorry I didn't think it was gonna be this hard to talk about <laughs> my mom was crying and basically she told me that I was gonna I was being sent away I wasn't gonna be able to see her for a long time. Basically, my mom drugged me, put me on a plane to Colorado, to this like lockdown facility for girls called Excelsior Youth Center. I like briefly remember like, you know, them, they had to get like a wheelchair and like wheel me to the airport because I wasn't able to walk because I was so drugged. And the reason that she drugged me was because she knew that if she, you know, told me that she was sending me there that I wouldn't go, which was true. Like, I definitely wouldn't have gone and nobody wants to get sent away to, like, some lockdown facility in another state. All I remember is, like, just, like, coming in and out of, like, 
you know, her being upset and crying and like me being naked and her putting clothes on me and her telling me that like, you know, I was gonna die if I kept like going down this path. I, all I remember was like waking up and it was really cold and it, I was in a strange room and I looked over to me and there was this other girl next to me and I looked at her and I said, where am I? Because I didn't remember like what had happened because my mom drugged me. She's like, girl, you in Excelsior Youth Center. And I was like, I thought I was like, I thought I got like some bad drug or something and that like I was tripping. <laughs> like I really thought I was like on some horrible acid trip or something and that it was gonna like go away. Well, it never went away. I was there for a year. And I know that doesn't seem like a long time, but this was a school that was literally, like it wasn't like jail, but you, it might as well have been jail because you're not allowed to leave. Um, you're not allowed to call, like make phone calls. Like jail is probably better. I don't know, I've never been to like prison before, but, or jail, but I think you at least get to call people like when you're in prison, like make phone calls to like home. You weren't allowed to do that. It was like like a lockdown facility for all girls and mind you I was taking medication like for my depression they took me off all my medication I was smoking cigarettes I was addicted to smoking cigarettes then like I didn't have any of my cigarettes I had to withdraw from like drugs like my um, like psychiatric drugs that I was on um, which is like really bad like even when I went to nursing school I was like holy shit like they just kind of took me off all that stuff they didn't like wean me off of it it's like dangerous to like not wean somebody off of medicine that they've been on for a long time especially like I was on like lithium and Seroquel and like all kinds of like crazy you know <laughs> like medicines or whatever I wasn't like my parents weren't able to visit like it was horrible like horrible it was like the worst thing I like I think that had ever happened to me and I was so pissed at my parents so pissed at them for like drugging me and taking me to this place and like you know at that time like you know I was really mad I thought to myself like okay how am I gonna get out of here and basically it was to work their program you go to school and you do counseling you do group counseling all the people there are there because they're bad kids too and you kind of put like all the bad kids in one place and so it's really hard to like get out of a facility like that because you end up getting in trouble like in there you're getting fights with girls blah blah, blah so much drama but it was like the worst experience ever and I have so many stories from that place but like I look back at it now and I'm like so thankful that my mom sent me there because if she didn't I probably would have killed myself. I was just like in such a bad place in my life and I never thought I was gonna get out of it and I probably wouldn't have if I wasn't sent away to this like rehab or whatever. I was there for a year, it was the longest year of my life. That's my rehab story. Sorry for getting like so emotional. I hadn't talked about it in so long that I thought it would just like be easy to talk about now because it's been such a long time but like you start talking about something and then it like brings up memories and you know it's it was a sad it was just really sad so thankfully I am at a way better place in my life now and I wanted to share this story with you because I want to let you know that if you or someone you know is in the situation that I once used to be that there is hope and there is help sometimes it might seem like it's the worst thing to like go to rehab or to get help or counseling or therapy or whatever or tell someone that you have a problem but at the end you're going to be so glad that you did and life is so worth living like I honestly thought at one point in my life like I didn't want to live and for a lot, many years actually I did not want to live I literally hated my life it was the worst worst torturous suffering thing I could possibly like endure it's just because like I was lost and I didn't have anybody to talk to and I felt like nobody cared about me and that's a really shitty feeling you know so I want you to know that if you think that no one cares about you I care about you I was once a really fucked up screwed up kid and I want you to know that if you're that fucked up screwed up kid there's hope life can be awesome and it's meant to be awesome you're supposed to be happy so if you're not happy for some reason please do me a favor like please comment below if you don't feel comfortable commenting below send me a private message on YouTube contact me on Instagram Twitter because I would love to talk to you and see if there's some way I can help you or just so that you have somebody to talk to. I would like to be that person. I wish that I had somebody, you know, when I was younger, but I don't even think they had 
YouTube. They didn't even have computers. Oh my God, I feel so old. <laughs> they had computers, but it was like, we didn't have any of this shit. So I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this story. If it was interesting, helpful, whatever. Be sure to like the um, video if you did enjoy this video so I know how to make more like these in the future. And comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.